So what have you been learning since that was, what, two two years ago now almost? Uh, I think it was 2015 of May. Uh, what uh, have you seen in the ring now and uh, how are you feeling? Uh, really, honestly, it's not even just the ring stuff. It's more about before I felt like I was training like an athlete. Now I'm starting to be able to start training like a professional fighter. And, um, you know, there's only so much you can do on your own. So now I'm starting to understand you need strength and conditioning coaches. You need, you know, uh, teachers that's going to help you through the, you know, through the course of your camp. So uh, that's one of the things that I, I, I think I'm learning the most is to, to be a professional fighter. And hopefully Saturday that would be this will be the start to something even bigger because I do plan on going back to Florida and doing five, six weeks of just strictly conditioning. Um, and that's what the great ones have done. If you look at the elite guys, there's only like six of them, right? Seven of them in the heavyweight division. And one of the things they did, that's something that they did. They worked on their bodies for a large amount of time. And then there's boxing, you know, and then, you know, they don't have to work, worry about getting in shape and boxing. You know what I mean? It takes away. When you look at Klitschko, his last two, three weeks of camp is strictly boxing. Oh. Yeah, true. The conditioning. Yeah, it's strictly boxing, you know, because he's already conditioned. Joshua, he's already conditioned, so he's not worrying about getting in shape again. He's already conditioned for the boxing part. So I think that's something that I learned, and I have to take it. I have to, I have to, you know, do it. I got to. You know, Brian Jennings, we have the same trainer. Um, I spar with Fury. I spar with Huey Fury, who's fighting for a title. And then I spar with Brian Jennings, and I'm like, it's a different level. It's a whole different level. So if I want to get to this, the next level, those are the type of guys I got to put my, you know, put myself against. Now, speaking of condition, Brian Jennings, he seems like a guy who must be, I mean, he's a vegan too, isn't he? Yeah. Are you, has that rubbed off on you? I have thought about it, only because, you know, the food here is different. When I was in England, I was eating, it was like clean. It, it was, wasn't as good right away, but I got used to it and I noticed my body change. But, you know, I have thought about it, but uh, just his, just not even, you know, his conditioning as far as, like, the stuff he does, you know, and he does the conditioning first, and that's one of the things I've noticed, like, the great ones are doing that, and then they're saying, okay, this is what we're going to do as far as the boxing. They're not, they're not living regular lives and then trying to go back in the box, because then you're hurting yourself, and, I, and it's happened to me before where I go to a camp for two months, then I come back here and I'm waiting on the shelf a little bit, just like, okay, where am I gonna go for the train? Where am, you know? And then I gotta go get in shape and worry about the boxing. It's too, it's too hard. It's difficult. It's right. a lot harder, especially I'm a heavyweight and I, it's not like I've been boxing since I was five. Right. So for me to, uh, for me to, like to, to stand out, I have to do this type of stuff. And the conditioning part with my style is gonna make a big difference because there's so much stuff that I can show. But I just got to get to that elite level of conditioning. I just, it's the truth. That must be a difficult. So you're in here in the casino for the next 48 hours. It's going to be tough for me just in terms of eating right and stuff in those last couple of days. Well, I'm at the crib. I live about 15 minutes. My grandmother. Oh, that's right. You're so, new. yeah. Oh, so I, I do have like a nice healthy spot I'm going to go to that I like, uh, that I like to eat, eat at. And um, I'm looking forward to it as far as just uh, being relaxed here, you know, I'm, I know the area, I know the casino, I come here a lot, um, and I'm just ready to go. I really am ready to fight. That's great. Uh, do you, uh, we got the big heavyweight division, all the eyes will be on it later this month. you want to make a prediction for uh, Anthony Joshua versus Vladimir Klitschko? This is the thing. You know, some fighters are kind of sensitive when you make certain predictions, but I will say this, I want Joshua to win. Um, but... Like, I want Joshua to win because he's young, you know, he's coming up, you know, that type of thing. But at the same time, I got a feeling that Klitschko, he has a lot left. And I feel like the styles, like, Klitschko has faced guys like Joshua as far as style. Joshua has to face somebody like Klitschko as far as defensively moving, the one-two, that type of thing. Right. Um, Fury beat Klitschko because, one, Fury had more athletic guys in his camp. Klitschko didn't have guys like Fury in his camp. And that hurt him because, you know, I felt like if you want to fight Fury, why not get, like, boxers and then get somebody tall 
to simulate it, you know, even if it's a basketball player, to simulate it so your eyes get used to the punches. Right. And, yeah. And, yeah. And you know, it was awkward when you see him in the first round, first four rounds. When I first fought with Ferry, I was like that. Like, why is he playing around? And then you realize he's not trying to knock you out. He's just trying to touch you, score points, and then he's done. So I felt like uh, that that style wasn't good for him at that time. Yeah. Joshua's style was good for Klitschko. Yeah, I think uh, Joshua is going to be um, he's going to come right out and want to trade. Yeah, Klitschko. And you can trade. And yeah. You can't trade with somebody that's really good defensively. He's going to be pawn with his jab. And then the one two, if he gets it clean and he and he fights tall guys really good. Yeah. If you're not tall and you're not one of those guys that uh, can fight inside, he fights you really good. And, and that's what happened to Pulev, and yeah. that's what happened to uh, Wok. Wok caught him, but got Wok. Tony Thompson. Yeah. He does kind of. He does. Jamal McLean, who you know uh, early on was giving him some, some problems. You know, he right. knocked him out with a tenth or eleven. Yeah. So. Other than that, he was a he's the only he tall guy that he yeah, but he's the only tall guy that lasted that long with Klitschko. Right, right. So you gotta you know you gotta think about it as far as that, and I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. Huey Parker, that's more interesting than as far as Klitschko and Joshua in regards yeah. to it's kind of a toss up, but the fights in New Zealand where Huey has to switch his style up totally to win. He's not an aggressive guy that comes out and punching. He don't throw in combinations. Yeah. So if Parker just beats him, he's, he can just beat him, you know, with jab and moving around, you know, right, in right. New Zealand. So yeah. it's, it's kind of interesting, you know. It's, and yeah, that he Wilder really has some interesting. Yeah, yeah, Wilder might fight Severn again. Yeah. And Severn trains down where I'm training at, so I might be able to help him. So, so far, I'm giving guys, you not. sparred with Tyson Fury. You sparred, sparred with, Fury. I sparred with Tyson Fury, Huey Fury. Uh, Bermain Severn, Amir Mansour, who I think hopefully has the title shot coming up. Um, I was supposed to help Ortiz, but, you know, I had a fight, so I couldn't. Um, I helped Molina for Wilder before. I sparred with Gerald Washington. Um, wow, so you're Scott. getting a lot of experience, not only in the ring, but in the gym. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't understand that, you know, I've done as far as, like, if I were to stop boxing today, God forbid, I get to say, like, man, I've done a lot and learned a lot. Like somebody that's been boxing for a long time because there were times where I was selling my PlayStation to go to California to train, just to train with Malik or, you know, just little stuff like that because I needed the experience. But if it's just learning conditioning and learning how, like, to be a professional, I'd rather that be my issue than learning how to be tough or learning how to, you know, uh, get in the ring and not be nervous because I'm never any of that. So, hey, look, if it's just a conditioning aspect and I'm getting it now, I'm starting to understand it as far as um, put myself in position to train for all year round, um, then I'm, I'm, I'd rather that than somebody question my toughness or question my heart because that's no problem. Right. It's like, yeah, and it does seem that like it's conditioning that tends to bite the uh, in the head. Yeah, it's I mean, conditioning. and some guys, like, in my situation, I've asked for it. I have asked for it. It's just, I, I would say this, through the graces of God, through the graces of just always being positive, Matt Cedrone, he called me and said, listen, if you come down here, you can stay here. We'll train you. And then I go in the gym. I see Briggs, he's trading Briggs, he's, he's has to burn. And I ask some questions about these guys and, hey, look, I'm like, I gotta give it my all. Right. And boom, I'm going to, I did what I had to do for this amount of time, and I'm going back down there, and I'm gonna pick weight on, and I'm gonna get better. But I just gotta handle my business Saturday. Nice, all right, sounds good. Well, thank you so much for talking thank to you. us, and good luck to you. Thank you, I appreciate it.